Hello, good evening, happy Wine Wednesday. I am so excited. I am going to be doing a virtual wine tasting with Three Sticks winemaker, Ryan Pritchard. So, in a moment, oh, hello, Sarah, I love you. Um, a friend and fellow wine writer, Sarah, has just joined Airwave. Um, you know Ryan and Three Sticks extremely well. So yeah, so I'm super excited. Those of you that have been reading the blog know that I've been writing about Three Sticks as long as I've known about them. Like literally, it was sort of one of those love at first sight things. Oh, here's Ryan. Let me get him on the screen to share with you. Okay, yes. So three sticks. Oh, hi, Bill. Oh my God. The whole team's here. Oh my God. I'm so excited and flattered. Hey, you're back again. I'm back, but I can't see you. Hold on one second. Here. Oh, that's okay. Nobody's here to see me. They just want to see you. <laughs> you should see, see like half of the screen. Yeah, it just keeps asking me to join. Oh yeah, perfect. So just join. I did. <laughs> here we well, go. Here, I can see you. Um, yeah. So I was literally, as I was just waiting to invite you to join, I was just saying that I've known Three Sticks for a few years now, and I think my words were, "It was love at first sight." Um, you guys are one of those brands. Anyone that loves. Oh no, we lost Ryan again. <laughs> technical difficulties. You gotta love Instagram Live. Um, I will get him back in one moment. Thank you, Bill, you're so sweet. I got dressed extra special for my Three Sticks Instagram Live. Um, actually, this is a new dress that just came. Hey, Ryan. About that, now I can see you, now we're good. I couldn't have a conversation with you without being able to look at you eye to eye. It was it's super weird when I'm doing like a, a go-to meeting, you can't see the screen you're sharing. So I'm, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> so did you, did you miss my whole love statement of three sticks? Should I repeat it just so you can hear it? I, I got be bits and pieces. You don't have to do that. I, okay. I know you look good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you know that <laughs> fan. So yeah, so I'm so excited. Thank you for joining us on this wine Wednesday evening. And I've got the wines open. We, why don't we tell everybody what we're going to be drinking and then we'll sort of dive into the tasting, do a little history of three sticks, do a little Ryan Pritchard history, and we'll weave it all together and we'll be done in 60 minutes. The time will fly. You're not going to believe how quickly this goes. Sounds great. Well, so yeah, we've got, uh, we got three wines that we're tasting today. We've got our uh, two, 2018 uh, Durrell Chardonnay Origin, which is a, uh, it's a concrete fermented Chardonnay. Uh, you mean no that and then, and then, uh, then you got the Pinot Blanc. Uh, okay. You there, so that's our Jarrell Pinot Blanc 2018 as well, and then finally we've got our Price Family Estates Pinot Noir, which is um, it's a blend of all of our estate vineyards. So um, a, a fun wine to put together as well. So those are uh, those. Are, that's the lineup for today, and um, some fun wines. Absolutely, and you know, speaking of love affairs, I sort of have a thing for Durrell Vineyard, and actually, Destination Durrell, which you guys have every October, that really solidified the love, like obviously tasting Durrell in the glass, and you know, being able to understand like the rich, creamy terroir that, that Chardonnay you guys produce comes from is wonderful, but then actually going there and drinking the wine on the grounds with you and Bill and the team, it's pretty cool. It's a fun, fun event. There's really, I mean, first of all, there's nothing like tasting a wine in the vineyard that it's grown in. I feel like that's, uh, that's one thing I always try to do whenever I can. If I'm traveling or something, if we're going out to a specific vineyard, try to get that wine uh, made from that vineyard, go up, taste it there. Uh, there's, you know, you kind of, you can get the whole picture. It's great to see pictures of it or videos of it while you're doing that. Sometimes that has to suffice, but if you've got the opportunity, definitely get out in the vineyard and that that event we do uh, we do two events a year one out at the vineyard and then one at the adobe which has its own uh, sort of wonderful uh, pieces of history and uh, and sort of connection to three sticks so um, I think and Destination Durrell is special because it's all we're, we're surrounded by vines we've got these great decks out there and it's usually a wonderful time of year um, you know fall in fall in northern That's California a perfect I was actually I think I was in Champagne this year so I missed it and I was contemplating like do I go to Champagne or do I go around for Destination Durrell but I figured there's always next year but there might not we'll see who knows maybe we'll get to go to Destination Durrell this year we will count we'll cross our fingers we're gonna hope for it it's uh, you know October uh, October in Sonoma County has been uh, hit or miss sometimes so we, we, we're, we're hoping for a good solid sunny beautiful year good 
Okay, well, people are commenting already on how beautiful um, the wines are. So maybe we should start with a little wine, have a sip while I, while I sort of ask you to share more about Three Sticks. Absolutely. So uh, pick up that origin, um, have a sip, I enjoy it. I'm gonna do the same because uh, it's not wine tasting without the tasting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've given up on the spit buckets. This is Three Sticks, I don't spit. I'm I'm in agreement with you, especially especially you know past nine a.m. Yeah, I was gonna say at five a.m. I'm glad you have that that attitude. Yeah, because <laughs> nine a.m. I mean these days it's like you know we do virtual wine tastings at all hours of the day, and this is our job to write and to work and to taste wine. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I guess you want to do a little history of Three Sticks at this. I'd love if you could share a little bit about Three Sticks. Yeah, so Three Sticks uh, started in 1997. Bill Price, our owner. Uh, started it when he purchased the Durrell Vineyard, which is kind of our home ranch. We've got two wines here uh, today from uh, from Durrell. And so he purchased that from Ed Durrell in 97. And uh, by around 20, uh, 2002, he decided to make a couple barrels of Pinot, um, just really kind of as a, uh, you know, something for his friends and family and just a small little project. And over the years, as wine often does, it became a, uh, it became a bigger project and a bigger passion. And so those two barrel, that single barrel turned into two barrels, turned into, you know, now we're, uh, we're still small. We're, you know, right around 8,000 cases. So it's uh, still a small sort of family run operation. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the name Three Sticks comes from Bill himself. So uh, growing up in Hawaii, his uh, buddies got a hold of his license one day when they were out surfing and they saw his full name, which is William Price the okay. Third. So they saw Roman numerals and they said, you know, what, what are those? We're going to call you Billy Three Sticks now. So, uh, so it's kind of a, a, a fun, fun uh, play on his name. Um, people always ask that. So right. I think I forgot that he was the third. So next time I see him, I'm going to have to tease him about that. Although I think it would be really cool to be the second or the third. I mean, I've met his son. I can't remember. His son's not the fourth, right? No, but, uh, but close. He's, he's got part of the name. <laughs> okay. Yeah. James, James is, uh, William James, uh, is, uh, is his name. So he's, he does. That William James Pinot, I'm still gunning for you guys to make that again. We've got it. Yep. We're so it yeah, William James is a vineyard that we've got in Sebastopol. It's a small little vineyard that um we we have turned into a, a vineyard designate wine. It's a beautiful vineyard, beautiful gold rich soils out there. So yeah, we've we've got that. Those come out in the fall. Okay. I guess I'm confusing the vineyard you used to have in Santa Rita or Santa Maria that you guys stopped well, producing. It's it it can be easily confused. So we used to make a wine called the James. Oh, uh, that's what Santa Rita. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Santa Maria. That was that was from Santa Rita Hills. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, I mean, I do love the William James, but I think the James is the one I was talking about. But anyway, back down yeah. wine lane. Yeah. Oh, so Mer I'd mention it. Of course, I always. You, if you don't ask, you don't get. So who knows? Maybe in a year or two, you guys will make that one again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, Three Sticks, uh, you know, um, we started there. Um, we do primarily Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. That's really our love. Um, but we also have a couple of other wines. We've got this Pinot Blanc that we're sharing today from the Durrell Vineyard, uh, as well as uh, a couple of Castagnata wines, which are from our Adobe that are wines that are um, Rhone blends, uh, Syrah, Grenache. Um, we make a Rosé. We make a red and a, and a Rhone white as well from, uh, from Durrell. And um beautiful beautiful wines and uh it's it's a great it's a great place um to be we've got some of the best some of the best vineyards um, we own gaps crown um Durrell vineyard walala up, up north uh, on the far sonoma coast uh, and some beautiful vineyards out in um sebastopol and uh occidental area as well yeah it's funny because i've spent some time talking to you and rob your vineyard manager and we keep saying i'm gonna go to gaps crown and now we're gonna we're gonna say it to however many people are on here I would love to get to the Gaps Crown Vineyard, especially with social distancing. It's a perfect media visit. We can stand six feet apart, just walk the soil together, and obviously drink Gaps Crown Pinot and Chardonnay. Absolutely, anytime. Gaps Gaps is great. It's a good hike too. You, you know, with all the parks closed down, you just go up there and uh, you can get. It's a it's a big it's a big ranch. We're about 130 acres planted up there, so um, and it's a good hike to the top. It's got some good elevation gain. So uh, oh. well, then by the up, we'll sober up and maybe deserve another glass. There you go. <laughs> um, oh, Sarah's been. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. Sarah's been to Gaps Crown. Um, 
Okay, cool. So, sorry, we're definitely getting side rail, but that I, I told you that would happen. There's a lot of fun stories here. So we were at Bill, Billy Three Sticks. What? Yeah, so, um, so, you know, we've got our winery in the town of Sonoma now. Um, uh, we've got the Adobe, which is our tasting room right off the square. It's an old uh, Adobe building built in 1842. So it's this wonderful sort of historic um, component to it all, to, uh, to the wine, which we, you know, we, that's where we serve. Uh, we do tastings there, private tastings. Um, and we make the wine over uh, on uh, the east side of town. So uh, we've got Durrell, the winery, and the Adobe all sort of in a, in a nice little uh, triangle there. I'm going to interrupt because I just want to clarify, you guys call it the tasting room. It's not like a tasting room, like in a garage, what you guys are thinking. It was designed like um, Ken Falk did the design. It Every single detail, it's you just want to move in. It's like sort of like a designer. It's like this cozy home and it's just, it's spectacular. So just to manage expectations, it's a very lovely, extraordinary Adobe tasting room. Absolutely. And and I know that you're a fan of Ken Falk. So uh, you got to know that on June 2nd, uh, we're doing a, 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 a tasting and a talk through with him. So Bill's going to join up with Ken. They're going to talk right. through three sticks together event. So I will be there watching in the audience. It's sort of nice. it sit back check. and let them entertain us. I will be there. No, it's, you know, it's the, the Adobe is a, a wonderful spot. It's beautiful. Um, it's kind of like no other experience you have. And we, you know, we always do what we call table fellowship. We, we always want wine to be a part of uh, experience uh, in part, part of family and part of um, sort of enjoying it together. And so we like to have that experience be really pretty much on your own. Um, you know, you get to sit with your group with, uh, with someone from our, our host from our tasting room uh, to be able to go through and walk you through those wines sort of uh, in a very intimate setting. And one of the cool things about the settings is I'm just thinking of the, I think I've done tastings in five different spots. You know, there's that main room and like the dining room. And then there's the smaller room off of, I was the shed, the shed, it's not the shed. What's it called? Storehouse. Yeah. Yeah. The door, sto storehouse, the storehouse is brand room, which we've done an event together. And I mean, there's literally like you could go back four or five times and not have the same experience twice. And then we're not even talking about outside yet. Yeah, I mean, it really is, um, it, you know, it was a home, it was a residential home. And so we've really tried to keep that feel. So you, you know, one day you might be uh, doing the tasting in the, the living room or the dining room, and then there's a little living room nook on the side and then the outdoor garden. And then, uh, so there, there are a bunch of different spots and each of them are unique and, and separate. So people can, can have their own experience there. And yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's all sorts of new, new and different experiences every time you go. So Sarah brought up a great point, the best bathroom wallpaper ever. Like literally one of my like Facebook profiles. I mean, I have a picture of myself with a big glass of Pinot Noir in that bathroom leaning against. I don't think I've, Ken, kudos to Ken because I've never seen myself in a bathroom with a glass of wine and the photo is just spectacular. So anyone it, that goes, make sure to visit the bathroom outside near the garden. <laughs> actually, both bathrooms are spectacular. It's funny. It's, it's the only it's the only place I've ever been to. We, when, we, when people come for the first time, we'll take them on a tour through the Adobe. Both bathrooms get a visit. They're so spectacular. You get to go in. One of them has hand painted a wall in the old master bedroom, which is like, I don't know, eight by eight feet. It's this tiny little spot. Um, and that's all hand painted on um, these beautiful sinks out. It's it's you can you can come for the wine and you can come for the yeah. bathroom. So I think whenever I, you know, make my first millions, I'm gonna have Ken Falk make me a few bathrooms like that. <laughs> I already have the wine, I just need the bathroom. <laughs> Absolutely, no, they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let you keep going. I'll pause on interruptions for maybe two minutes. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, the, the really the thing to that we like to focus on at Three Sticks is, is Pinot Noir Chardonnay. That's what we spend almost all of our time doing. You know, um, we're super lucky that we have Rob that, uh, you know, you mentioned there, uh, that he, he manages all of our vineyards. We work hand in hand with him um, in these 2018s, especially that was super critical. We were, you know, going out, seeing, seeing the crops getting bigger and bigger and um, having to work with him to really bring those in line. Uh, otherwise, those wines could definitely sort of, uh, you, you know, you could you run the risk of them petering out if they if the yields get too big what? out there. Rain in 2018, why was the crop so big? It just, it really was one of those years where everything kind of worked out. You know, when you, when you think of vintages, oftentimes you're thinking of, uh, were there anything, were there bad events, essentially? Were there big heat spikes? Were there, 
during bloom, whether uh, rain or wind or cold or frost. So all these sort of negative things that happen throughout a vintage. 2018 really had none of that. It was, like it was perfect non-storm, just perfection. Yeah. Yeah. So all the all the little components, and and so the the vines were super happy. They, you know, imagine every year you start off with, uh, you know, X, and then it just kind of dwindles down with all those events. Well, this year we started off with that, and we kept them all, and and everything kind of went along smoothly throughout the year. And so uh, it was really important to go out and uh, you know work with Rob and cut back fruit. And, you know, it was just like a constant. We had to go out multiple times throughout the year to bring it, you know, cut it back so that what was left on the vine still had that nice concentration. Well, had that for today, we haven't even talked about the tasting notes, which we will get to when you finish the story. It, it, <laughs> you know, it has great, like, crispness, crispness and acidity. Like, obviously, you guys did a great job at that because it's definitely not too big and, you know, what winemakers with your style would be wanting to avoid. Absolutely. You know, this... This wine is, uh, we make two Durrell Chardonnays. And so um, this origin Chardonnay is an unoaked version. And the, the other version is a sort of traditionally fermented and in, uh, in oak, um, barrel fermented, barrel aged. Um, this one is done in concrete, um, no oak at all, but on Sir Lee. So you still get that richness, you still get that body, but you're not, but you're not getting any of those oak characteristics. You're not getting those, uh, those spicy, tones you're not getting those toasty notes it's really just the minerality yeah the bright, the bright pure fruit right and you know i feel like i don't know a fish it, it, it would be great with some type of seafood or maybe a lobster all yeah i mean seafood salt you know any anything with a, a nice saltiness to it um we do these tastings and you know people will come out and show what they're what they're pairing with it on a, on yeah. a given day and you know it's sea bass it's just any really any kind of uh any kind of uh, seafood pairs wonderfully with it, but it also has a richness to kind of stand up to some of the other components, some of the, you know, the butteriness that you might get in a, in a, in a uh, sauce on a fish or something like that as well. Yeah. Oh, we have a good suggestion. Su seafood paella from El Dorado. Well, that might actually be a good lead in. I promise we'll go back to the three, six history story. So Ryan, you and I were chatting and I mean, you know, I follow you guys on social. I read your newsletter. You guys have some really cool culinary and wine things cooking. Can you share what's going on uh, in the kitchen? So yeah, the, the one that uh, we were just talking about, the sip and savor, that is a, uh, it's a partnership we're doing with uh, El Dorado kitchen. Um, as well as Gary Farrell and Chef Charlie Palmer. So it's, um, yeah. it's really kind of two different experiences that we're both kind of um, promoting together, uh, giving people an opportunity instead of having to drive up and you know, go to Sonoma and going to uh, you know, the Russian River, which you can't really do right now anyways. Um, we're putting this together and what we're doing for us, we, we've got our Pinot Blanc and we're pairing it with, um, with a paella there you go. As well as uh, as well as a, a Russian River Pinot Noir. And oh, I have it somewhere, but I didn't pull it out. Oh, the Gary Farrell one. Yeah. Okay. Which yeah, I def I have a lot of Gary Farrell. I love them as well. So yes. Okay. Sounds like a great combo. So the cool thing with the cool thing with that is you get you know you bring out the 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 bright sort of seafood components with the paella um, part of the uh, you know when you're when you're tasting it with the uh, with the white wine. And then when you go over to the Pinot Noir, you pull out the, the uh, grilled meats. There's yeah, sausage in there, um, some, some wonderful sort of smoky character. There's probably pork if he's making a pork and a Pinot mix, I'm going to guess, because he's got his great uh, pigs and Pinot, which is all pork and Pinot. Absolutely. So it's, it's just a really cool, you know, it's sometimes you, you'll do a pairing and it's, it's just one side of that. But with this, you're getting, you're getting those bright notes and then you're also getting those smoky notes from the Pinot and, and pairing those together. And it's cool because what they'll do is they'll send the wine out. Um, they'll also send it with, um, with a recipe. So you'll get the paella recipe and there's a little video that Chef Armando does that's all super fun and he'll go through it, um, talk, tell you how to make the paella so you can make it on your own. Or if you're like me and you just want it made for your, by somebody else, especially having the chef being right next door, you can go get it at, uh, at EDK and he'll, uh, they can make it there and you take it home and do it. I have a paella pan. I bought it like a year ago because I tried to make paella without a pan. It's not good. So <laughs> perfect. So these have specific dates, right? Uh, so that one now is a, it's a, that is something you can go on our website and order. Um, okay. 
available now on our website. So you can, you can put that um, order in, have it sent to you, and then you'll get that video, a link to the video as well as that, that recipe, and you can do it at, at your leisure, really. And then if you, you, know, you want a Gary Farrell one as well, you can do that on the same day with friends. You can do it on a different day. You can do it right yeah. after, however you do it. But they're, they're two separate experiences, but you, uh, you can purchase ours on our website. Perfect. That is so fun. I feel like one blessing in disguise of the shelter in place. I mean, we've all had a little bit more. Well, I don't have kids. We were talking about this today. People with children have not do not have as much time on their hands, you know, because now they're replacing the teacher's job. Um, but I've become like a chef. I mean, I always liked cooking, but like cooking for yourself, not as exciting. But when you're stuck at home and you're like, well, what's the I mean, you can't order in every night. I wish I could, but it gets a little expensive to order in every night. Um, totally. Yeah. So um, no. speaking of which, I'm you know, so excited. What? Oh, we lost Jeff. Okay. I think I hear you. <laughs> I lost. I lost. Oh, you're back. Uh, I'm back now, I hope. Okay. Yeah. So no, I think these cooking, these cooking experiences, three sticks and Gary Farrell are doing are amazing. And um, yeah, I mean, the food, the wine, there's just something for everybody. All right, we'll just give it a minute. Um, Sorry. It's okay. No problem. Okay, well, I want to make sure we finish the history of three sticks, and then we should probably start tasting. I already cheated. I'm, I started the Pinot Blanc, but we should officially start tasting the Pinot Blanc. All right. You want to get into Pinot Blanc, or you want to get into – go? we've done origin already? Well, we didn't really talk about it. Let's talk about origin, and then right. but we're, yeah, we're already halfway through. This is just so fun. It's flying by here, yeah. So um, – so yeah, the origin, I kind of touched on it a little bit. The origin, we ferment uh, in concrete eggs. So, okay, um, concrete. you know, one of the one of the things that we were looking to do is to really And see it sort of naked without the without with without any. I'm hearing like every other word. What's going on? Back on just to refresh. Okay, I can hear you now, I think. Okay, he's gonna join us in one second, you guys. So those of you that are sipping along with us, I would love you to tell us what you're sipping. I know, Nate Murdoch, Gary Farrell wines are amazing. And thank you for joining. I think he's one of my most regular watchers. He's been at like every single Instagram Live. That is a good supporter and a great friend. Okay, we're gonna add three sticks right back. Um, I think Ryan's trying to get back in. We are having a little technology issue, which always seems to happen with Instagram Live. But I feel better because I was watching a Facebook Live today and there was even way more glitches. Oh, hey, Carl. Carl's here. I mean, I think the whole 360 team is here. This is what I'm talking about. They're like a family. Um, they're so awesome. Okay, we just need to get Ryan back here because he. we have to finish talking about these wines. Oh, there we go. He's back. Okay. Hi, Ryan. Oh, good. Voila. Let's see. Is it any better now? Yes. I don't want to say, I don't want to jinx it, but. <laughs> let's, let's cross your fingers. It's probably yeah. my kid, kids doing their, uh, their, their Zoom meetings or oh, something. School is over. It's wine or five o'clock. <laughs> Wi-Fi only. No more Zooming for right. those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, no problem. But, yeah, so I, I don't I don't know where I lost you, but you know the Chardonnay. Uh, I think it, you're, you're talking about the concrete or the 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 egg. No, yeah, oak. no oak. So um, so the goal was really to make a wine that showcased the fruit um, without without that oak. And um, so you know what we do every year actually is we were doing a um, 
a, a winemaker luncheon out at Durrell where um, all winemakers who make wine from Durrell would come out and they would do a, a lunch and they would um, showcase the wines. We'd, you know, drink through all the wines, taste them, make comments. You know, it was uh, sometimes civil, sometimes not. Uh, but one of the things that we realized with those was that the, the wines, the differences of the wines was large. the wine, whether a, a larger, uh, a large, larger wine, um, a wine that has a, a bigger profile or not. And so what we said, let's, let's get to uh, the core of the wine. And so we started fermenting in it's always so fresh and vibrant. Um, it it really is so fresh wine. and vibrant. I love those words. Both and a lot of like green fruit. Oh, there's a really good idea coming from a fellow writer who I adore, Sarah. I want to be a part of it if this happens. She's suggesting a vertical on origin. We could do Gap's Crown, Durrell. Uh, maybe Absolutely. In your down in Santa Barbara. <laughs> what? Well, uh, you know, the cool thing about a vertical on origin, you know, it would be, you know, we're, so we'd, we'd gone through vintages, the same wine over the over different vintages. So, um, you know, we've been doing some of these virtual tastings with folks and, you know, I'll go and pull a wine that we're going to be tasting. And every once in a while, I'll think I have the right wine to realize, oh, man, that's a wrong vintage or whatever. And so, you know, I've kind of done yeah. these uh, mystery mystery verticals where pull out its 2015 origin on accident and um, it's really cool to see those wines um, evolve and, and age and bottle. Um, it's something that you sometimes you wouldn't think it would actually age uh, as well as it does um, you know because it doesn't have some of the, the structure and the tannin that would allow for uh, you know normally allow for aging uh, but uh, the origin is beautiful uh, even even years in for sure. Okay, well, I think we're going to conclude the origin, as you know, I, I, I never say no to Chardonnay, but I do want to give the Pinot Blanc and Pinot Noir a little bit of time for us to talk about them. And I think the Pinot Blanc, um, today, the Pinot Blanc is sort of the, the focus in my eyes, because I think what you guys are doing with this Pinot Blanc, donating $10 a bottle to Sonoma Family Meal is so incredible. So anybody that's joining for this tasting, if you didn't buy the wines ahead of time don't worry absolutely yeah um but you can still buy them you can buy them after the fact they're all on their website and i would you know give an extra consideration to buying the pinot blanc normally i would never think of myself to go buy a pinot blanc but after trying this one i think it's really refreshing it's almost like a more sophisticated sauvignon blanc um and it's beautiful and you can't you can't beat donating ten dollars to sonoma family meal for every bottle Absolutely. And, you know, we've, we've committed to, to, to raising $20,000 for uh, Sonoma family, family meal and uh, donating this. We've also worked with single thread and doing some of their, um, their uh, meal nights where they've um, donated food uh, to, to, to folks as well as selling some uh, food to folks of that. And uh, it's just, it's been great, a great, great way to, uh, to kind of help the community and um, help us that, that are kind of struggling out there right now because um, wineries are our business from a, from a tasting room standpoint, um, but we still are uh, able to do some things. It's, I feel like the restaurants are, are really kind of uh, getting the brunt of it right now, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I saw that you guys did that with And then the people who the restaurants serve. Yeah, and I think it's amazing. I mean, Sonoma restaurants really seem to be supporting all these family meals. I mean, I know some restaurants in San Francisco are doing it too. I'm just reading up about a lot of wine country and it's really wonderful. Um, okay, so shall we talk through this Pinot Blanc? Because those that don't have it in front of them are probably wondering what we're sipping. of Pinot Noir. So um, imagine you're, uh, it's your, the Pinot Noir vineyard and you're looking through the vine and you see a couple of white clusters. Those are just some something that didn't get right. Well, 
And then uh, realize later on that this is actually just a white grape. Well, that's that can happen with Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is is sort of uh, prone to mutation, uh, which is kind of why we have all these different clones that uh, you know that that showcase different fruit profiles. But the the Pinot Blanc is uh, is one of those mutations. You then take that and you can propagate that through the vineyard. Um, and create sort of this, this new variety. And so that happened back in Burgundy or Alsace back in, uh, back in the day. And um, they took that, brought it over to the U.S. to Oregon State. They cleaned it up and um, decided we decided to, to plant some we we used to make yeah. uh, pinot blanc from uh, gloria ferrer fruit and they loved it too because they were drinking the wine tasting it and said well you know we're gonna bring that wine back we're gonna bring that fruit back and uh so we for it to ryan so you're a little spot okay so it's really kind of like like you said i think it's a cross between uh chardonnay still well, i can hear you it's just the, the thing is spinning i don't know what's going on we got a Bump your kids from the internet, cause. <laughs> okay, maybe All you're right. back. Uh, silly question. Yep. So you might have said this, but I might have only heard half of it through the technology. So is this a white version of a Pinot Noir, basically? Uh, kind of. Yeah, it's it's a mutation of of Pinot Noir. So yeah, oh. it 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 has sort of uh, evolved into this uh, this this different variety and. Um, you know what makes red wine red generally is is the, the skin. The, is the skin right? So it's on. Um, so the skin on this the one, cab one, the cab one stayed white. Noir, right? And so when you when you ferment red wine um, on this, that's what. I feel like Pinot Blanc is to Pinot Noir as Sauvignon Blanc is to Cab Sauv. People don't realize Sauv Blanc and Cab Sauv are like sisters or cousins, right? Yeah, I think I think that's a good analogy for sure. Yeah, and okay. What are you smelling? Um, uh, it's got this. You get some of that high tone uh, from. Uh, we actually make it in a in a similar way to. And it also gets a little bit of acacia barrel that we put on it. And that acacia out the air. What is an acacia barrel? So, so acacia is a it's a it's a type of wood uh, from folks who are uh, from the Soviet. Uh, that's where you know, they'll sometimes put a, a barrel of that in in the Sauvignon Blanc as well. But we um, we use about ten percent new oak and about ten percent acacia um, new acacia barrel. Okay. And it's just a different, it's a different type of wood that brings out different. Um, components of it. It's uh, much more perfumey, much more um, sort of high tone. It doesn't, you don't get that um, toastiness that comes out of it. It's so. like floral. I was, I'm, I, I'm such a geek, but I have my, my deductive tasting note chart in front of me. For those of you that are, I'm actually starting W set very soon. So I'm like, I got to start using all these right words. Um, and yeah, I was like, what, what am I smelling? It's like a little sweeter than the Chardonnay. I don't want to say passion fruit, but it's like a, a sweet, sugary white fruit i don't know that's your job you tell me yeah, what i'm smelling <laughs> you've got these like sort of apple blossom i love like there's like a floral fruit component to it as well you know so you you get a little bit of that um um i yeah maybe geranium i see geranium on my i get um uh, that word yeah you like geranium I don't know about geranium. Oh, you, oh my God. You, you <laughs> I don't, don't get, get geranium, geranium but, no, but yeah, it, it's like, it's. Megs, oh my God, she's on it. It's white peach. I retract geranium. Shout out. Ryan, we might have to have you come off and come back on because that seemed to work before. Do you want to leave and come back? Because you're like spinning again. Let's do that. 
Okay. So you guys, while we're waiting for Ryan, um, those of you who has the Pinot Blanc at home, I know a couple people have commented on how beautiful it smells and Sarah has had it before. And who else has had this? Ooh, honeysuckle. Yes. Jim Boholic mom. I love it. Definitely honeysuckle, definitely white peach, jasmine. Um, thanks for all the tasting notes help guys. It's really more fun to do this together. Um, has anyone ever seen this uh, Court of Master Sum chart with all the words and descriptors? It's very helpful when you're trying to think of the words that you're smelling on the air. Um, I am broadcasting from San Francisco. All right, let me double check if Ryan is back. Ryan is in Sonoma, and apparently the Wi-Fi in Sonoma is not as strong as us city folks. Or potentially his children are doing schoolwork on Zoom and they're eating up the Wi-Fi. Okay, he's back. Okay, Ryan. Oh, hello, Copain. Thanks for watching. I don't know, Sarah. You tell me. The San Francisco Wi-Fi is working just fine. Ryan, we're talking about the Sonoma Wi-Fi situation versus San Francisco. I'm a country <laughs> boy up here in Sebastopol, you know? Well, I, know, I knew that. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. So, knock on wood. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to just cross our fingers here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. So, where were we? So, Oh, we got some really great tasting notes while you were gone. Um, jasmine. Oh, shoot. I already forgot them. Um, peach. No, peach flower. Yeah. Yes, peach White flower. Peach. Honeysuckle. These guys, we've got some pros on this Instagram live. Absolutely. No, it's, it, it's, uh, I, it's super floral, super minerality. Um, and then you just get like a nice weight to it. So, you know, we do barrel ferment it. We age it in barrel. We have it on lees. So it still gets some of that, a little bit of creaminess. The goal is not to make, you know, you can you can make a Pinot Blanc in this really sort of acid-driven style um, um, that's sort of more Alsatian uh, from France. It's just this, it's a different, it's a different style and I think it's beautiful. Um, yeah. But in California, we've got a little bit more sun, we've got a little bit more ripeness. Um, so that, that leads some people to want to make it in a style that's like very Chardonnay-esque, um, oh, which really? is, yeah, so they'll, they'll you know, some people will put a lot of oak on this um, and make it like a sort of cal your this style. I think the three sticks is the Pinot California Chardonnay, um, uh, sort of old school butter bomb, um, whatever. And that was yeah. really what we were trying to get away from. Um, is let's somebody asked the question, where are these grapes from for the Pinot Blanc? They are from Gaps. I'm sorry. No, they're from Durrell. I'm looking at the Durrell. bottle. Um, this is from Durrell. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it's about two thirds through the program. We might want to, anything else we want to talk about with this beautiful Pinot Blanc or shall we start tasting the Pinot Noir? Everybody following along. Oh, you're back, Ryan. Hey. Well, Trey Williams, if you didn't get any Pinot I Blanc, like you know. you're going to have to order some and I would just order a case while you're at it. It is spectacular. And remember, $10 goes to Family Meal. So if you buy a case, that's $120 that's going to Sonoma Family Meal. It's a win-win. Sounds like that's the way to do it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I buy a case. Um, well, how do you feel about the Pinot Noir? Are you ready to move on or anything we didn't cover about the Pinot Blanc? I think, I think that's good. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mara Mac also mentioned, so if you get a case, you also get a free night at the MacArthur Place. We have another uh, thing we're working with MacArthur Place, a hotel in Sonoma, where if, uh, if you purchase a case of that, you can, you get a free night there. So I think we need to get, um, I need to purchase a case of something. Another, another great option. Yeah, that is so cool. So MacArthur Place is this really cool hotel that just opened, well, not just, it's been like a year now, I think, in downtown Sonoma. <laughs> I've definitely been eyeing it. They're on my hotel bucket list. So I guess normally I don't pay to stay at hotels. They just invite me to come and write about them. But I guess I'll buy a case of wine and then I can stay at MacArthur Place. It's a win-win. Ryan's on board. Well, if I do that, maybe we can do that tasting in the garden while I'm up. Amazing. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to get back to those old days where we just go out and do what we want and have fun and uh, go out and visit? I know. I mean, I think we're all hitting the point where we need that to be back. We're getting there. 
Okay, so what are you smelling on this Pinot? Who has the Pinot, the Price Family 2018 Pinot? Which of you guys at home there. is tasting? <laughs> um, we've got a lot of fire pit conversations. Let's talk about the Pinot, guys. Um, so Price Family Estate. So correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. This is a blend of all of your vineyards, right? Yes. What we do is, you know, most of our wines are, are vineyard designate wines, right? So we make a wine from uh, Durrell, from Gap's Crown. Um, but with this wine, what we'll do is we'll take all of those vineyards, those vineyard designate wines, and we'll blend them together to create Old Sonoma Coast uh, in all of our properties that yep. we have throughout the Sonoma Coast. And that spans from all the way up at Wallala, which is uh, about a two and a half hour drive from Durrell Vineyards. It kind of shows you the expanse that Sonoma Coast has. It's this uh, you know, it's it's a it's a big uh, AVA and and so uh, super fun wine to make. It's the one that takes us the most time. It's probably the hardest one to make of all because uh, there well, are so many different name on it, so you can't get it wrong. <laughs> Absolutely, Boston, Absolutely. Like this is beautiful. This is just a beautiful expression of three sticks, all the vineyards. Um, oh, we're getting some good tasting notes. We have such a smart audience. Um, fruit forward, cherry, clove agree with all that. I don't know if I smell clove, but my, my no, nose might not be sharp enough. Tea leaf, cherry, licorice, dark berry. Cherry, licorice, dark berry. I love it. Yeah. Subtle oak. I agree. Subtle oak notes. So what's going on with the barrel here, Ryan? So you have one Cooper. Francois Ferrer offers a little bit more toastiness, sort of, sort of marshmallow, like, um, but, but a toastier oak. Uh, and then we go to another one like Marcel Cadet, which is a barrel from Dargo and Jack. Sorry. So yeah, so Francois Ferrer offers this like toasty, uh, sweet note, whereas you work with another one, Marcel Cadet, which is a little bit more um, creamy, a little bit less toastiness to it. It's more of a mouthfeel barrel. So you're saying you do a little bit of both for this? A little bit of both. Uh, and then we have uh, a couple of other barrels, Tenerie O, which we work with, with our custom toasting um, with them and our custom sourcing of, of oak with Tenerie O and uh, Kintessence, which is a little bit more spice component. So speaking of oak, I remember you and Bob went on an oak trip. You went to France last year and I was watching that on social media and I was so jealous. That sounds like the coolest trip. Can you tell us what you guys do when you're barrel shopping or picking your trees? Yes. Yes. We've uh, we've got this great partnership with Tunnelry O, where we um, we've both cr we go and select our own our wood when we go over there. So we'll go on a, a trip to uh, to trip to France. Um, go explore the different different areas um, where we're sourcing our oak. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be seasoning our oak for those uh, those three years, work with them, talk with them about it. And then those staves come back to the U.S. where I they're think um, add creating my own into, into barrels. List with and we'll go out and uh, we've worked with Quinn. I'm hearing about 5% of it. Let's see what the, the viewers say. I saw you laugh. Um, I don't know what's going on with the Sebastopol Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> I apologize. All, uh, all good. Is, uh, it's the time. country. You live in the country. Um, luckily, I know maybe a little bit of what you're saying, so I can try to fill in the dots. Um, yeah, well, we have a really good conversation about people. Um, Sarah, I already offered to carry their bags. Nice try. Jet Setting Fashionista offered last year to carry bags for Ryan and Bob if they needed it. So I think I'm at the top of the list. Um, anyway. I can hear you. Well, I don't know if people can hear you. You're the important one. It, it seems like it seems like it's a delay half the time. That's that's the. Okay. <laughs> yeah, send a transcript to us. Oh well, I forgot to mention you guys. This will be on YouTube. 
Um, I have a YouTube channel, Jet Setting Fashionista. So in, what day is today? Wednesday? I would say by early next week, this will be on my YouTube channel. Everybody can watch me and Ryan again. <laughs> I know you keep breaking up. Ryan, do you want to hop off and come back? I don't Sorry know for my break. All good. All good. Um, I'll try. Oh, oh, he's gone. He's nicer to look at. I know. Isn't Ryan a cutie pie? He's so nice. He's happily married. He has two children who are hogging the Wi-Fi. And he makes spectacular wine. It's a win-win. So you guys, while I have this moment to myself, I want to tell you guys what else I'm cooking. Um, so I realized I've been doing these for a few weeks and I didn't have a charitable component. Shame on me. I just didn't really get my act together. Um, but I spent some time during the fires volunteering with World Central Kitchen up in Sonoma at the Santa Rosa Fairgrounds. And um, Chef Jose Andres and his team, they have cooking during disasters down to a T. They can literally do it with their eyes shut and they're so organized. They cook delicious meals. I spent a couple days up there. I don't know if you remember, Tyler Florence was there. Um, Michael Mina was there. Like uh, Kay Figo owners and chefs were there. David Nayfield, like a ton of amazing chefs were up there. And we were all just, I mean, I'm obviously not a chef, but we were just volunteering and cooking. So what I decided to do is I am going to ask you guys if you wouldn't mind chipping in, hold on one sec, Ryan, um, and donating like 20 or $30, just think of it like a bottle, half a bottle of wine um, to the World Central Kitchen. That is my fundraiser. I have a little page that I'm fundraising. My goal is $2,000. I think I have like $150 so far. So I really need you guys to each chip in like $20 each. I donated a hundred and my sister did. I, my parents are really slacking on this donation thing, but um, yes. So support World Central Kitchen and support Sonoma Family Meals by buying that case of Pinot Blanc we already talked about. And um, yeah, then you'll sort of be winning. You'll be winning locally and you'll be winning globally. And one of my viewers on my last, um, I will post a link, Sarah, in my profile. Thank you for that. I'll do an Insta story after this with the link. And somebody said, support local, support local. And I, I agree, nine times out of 10, I do support local. I just, during the Sonoma fires, World Central Kitchen came in and field like, fed like 2,000 people a day. And I was very impressed with them. And they're organized, they have like Cisco, they have all these big corporations donating food. So in terms of scalability, they can do that. So the only reason I'm not doing local is because I hands-on got involved in this organization and I think it's wonderful. So whether it's global, local, as long as you're helping out, I think kudos to everybody trying to help people. Um, Trey Wood, good question. Yep. Put it on my Insta story. Maybe I'll put it in my Jet Setting Fashionista Instagram bio. Sorry, right. my, back. that was my spiel. <laughs> Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yes! Perfect, good. Okay. Why don't you talk while we can hear you? <laughs> for the for the few moments we can <laughs> you can hear me, right? Well, yeah. So, um, I yeah, I, we we're talking about the PFE. I don't know where we left off. I don't know what you heard and what you didn't. But um, so the barrels are absolutely spectacular. So, is it three or four barrels that go into this? Four different four different coopers that we use. Okay. Um, we got a little bit into the story about going to select a wood. I don't know if you if you uh, uh, if you heard that story. Story, no, but, um, it's it's pretty oh, spectacular to be able to go see where the the oak has grown. It's a whole nother whole nother making and and you know as a winemaker usually you you see the barrels rarely do you get to go deep into mm -hmm. understanding how they're made, um, where they're sourced, how they're seasoned, all that. So um, that's been sort of a whole new experience and and a super rich one for us to to partner with them on that. So I, we, we, I didn't really talk about this. I, I intended to, and we ran out of time. Um, we're mentioning Bob. So for those that don't know, the Bob that we're talking about is Bob Cabral, legendary winemaker, who I know you met um, during your internship at William Selyam way back when. So if you guys want to learn some fun facts about Ryan, I am, I don't know, a couple years ago. I'll throw that on my story too. So you can read all about Ryan's bio. And, um, but yeah, so tell us about Bob Cabral. What's it like working with Bob? He's so, he's so exceptional. Absolutely. Oh, well, so Bob's really kind of my, both my introduction into the, the real sort of 
the wine world. So this is, I came at wine as sort of a second career. Um, I moved out back to California. I was um, living in Colorado at the time and um, not in wine at all. Decided that I really, I've been making wine on the side, been, you know, doing it um, as, a, as a serious, serious hobby, taking classes at Davis. Um, decided I was full time and yeah. um, was fortunate to get a internship at William Selium and where Bob um, ended up staying on there long, longer than um, long, the internship and um, awesome. to be able to to have uh, the ability to work industry really um, so it's, it's it's been great um, we both sort of started in 2015 Okay. We're getting some great feedback. God, I, Trey Williams, I love you. Please follow me. We're going to be like Instagram friends. Um, he's saying Bob is why I love Pinot Noir. And now Ryan is. I have two idols. Thank you, Pinot Noir gods. I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so lucky. And thank you, Ryan. <laughs> by the way, I, I don't know if I thank you. Thank you for your time. You, um, yeah, I mean, you gave up your Wednesday five o'clock happy hour to be with us. So I appreciate it. Sarah says Bob's wines have changed her life. Yeah. So I have to say, last fall, I got to spend a day with you guys at Three Sticks um, doing Harvest. Absolutely. And it was connected. great. It was with you and Bob and Carl and the team. Um, I actually think you need to put me to work harder next time because I didn't really work that hard. I just watched and took a lot of photos. But it was really fun to be able to come up with you guys work your magic. What I did. It was a, it was a, it was a fun time. And yeah, I did a punch down and I counted the grapes, like the seeds in the grapes. What does that do again? Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I love Well, you were, idiot. you were, at that time you were some sample counts. So we were, um, sam right. Someone, yeah, I think you should move Ryan, your wife, or contact your Wi-Fi provider. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, well, maybe we have like three minutes left. So before Instagram cuts us off, is there any last words that you want to share, um, with our lovely viewers? Well, thank you for having me on and I apologize for the uh, horrible connection, but, um, come on out, um, you know, you know, check out three sticks, especially when uh, when you have the opportunity. When we have some uh, some, some non shelter in place times, and um, and yeah, by the wine, we've got we got some fun things. We do a bunch of virtual uh, virtually. We you've got um, get and we do a tour of the Adobe. There's all sorts of uh, cool things that we've done, and it's really kind of the, like you said, it's the the silver lining to this whole thing. Uh, we've found new ways to connect with our yeah customers. and i sampled your virtual tasting when you guys were sort of rolling it out i got to join in on the fun with you and bill and prema and the whole team and i have to say i literally felt like i was like wait i'm in san francisco but i'm being transported to the adobe because they welcome you and they're like here's a glass of rosé which the moment you walk into the adobe you get welcome with a glass of rosé so um and there was like this virtual 3d tour of you know ken folks work um I can't remember. I think the bathroom was in the tour. I'm going to have to double check. But um, yeah, it's super fun. So you guys, even if you don't live in California, go visit Three Sticks with their virtual tour. And you'll, I would say besides the wines, which are obviously why people love Three Sticks, I think it's the best of both worlds because you get to interact with your team as well. Okay. Um, on Thursday. 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 So, um, oh, good. Oh, Sandra from Girl in a Fig. Um, check out our website. We're, we've we've uh, so we paired up with Kyle Canard. Girl in a Fig. Bilet. I'm so, doing an Instagram live with tomorrow, her next um, Friday got, or no, so, the 29th in like two weeks. Um, so Sandra's amazing. She sent me all this like fig jam. I don't know if you've had it. Absolutely. Ryan. I've literally had like five of the six cans. I have to like hide the sixth can for me so I have something to taste during the Instagram live. <laughs> But Girl in a Fig's amazing. They're right around that corner from 
three sticks. So when you go visit three sticks, when things open up, you can go to Girl on a Fig after. Okay, Ryan, well, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge. Um, apparently, let's add Pinot Blanc Lover to my list. You convert. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, yep. Yeah. So you guys, thank you so much for sharing your time. I, I have to say, don't tell the other people, but I think the participants of this Instagram live have the it. best tasting notes of any of the Instagram <laughs> lives that I've done. So I don't know if club members, you guys comment how you heard about the Instagram live. I, I'm curious if you're a wine club members or just geeky wine people like me or um, jet setting fashionista followers, but well, thank you for your yeah. amazing thoughts and tastes. And um, yeah, hopefully we can do this again or else I'll, I'll see you at the Adobe. Oh, Trey Williams. Oh, he's both. He's a wine club. Oh, Trey. Trey's a wine club member and a nerd. Well, I am too, so I can relate. But thank you guys. Join for that. Oh, wait, Ryan, we have to take a picture. Smile. Shoot, I forgot. One more. Smile. Can you hold a bottle, please? Because this will go on the YouTube video. I got it. Thank you. Okay, hold the bottle. Oh, perfect. All these comments are in the way. Can you put it on your other side by any chance? Others, okay. Yeah. Matter. Label matters. Perfect.